Welcome everybody to Taboola and Unbounce present Beyond the Click. Today, we're going to be talking about how to generate more leads from your landing pages. My name is Sean Serdobel, and I'm the in-house creative strategist here at Taboola. Uh, and my job is to help Taboola advertisers optimize their creatives, campaigns, and landing pages uh, in order to get the best return on their investment at Taboola. I'm joined today by Corey Dilley from Unbounce. And uh, in his job at Unbounce, he helps companies get better conversion rates from their ad campaigns. So please welcome Corey Dilley, Director of Campaign Strategy at Unbounce. Yeah, thanks, Sean. It sounds like we have pretty similar jobs, actually. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for joining us today. So uh, let's dive right in. As you likely know, there are two ways to get more conversions out of an ad campaign. You can either increase your budget or you can optimize your campaign. And so to a lot of, uh, to a lot of advertisers, optimization starts and ends in the platform. Of course, it's necessary to test new ads, bidding strategies, targeting strategies, and stuff like that. But surprisingly few venture down, uh, further down and optimize uh, their landing pages. Of course, I'm biased, but I always find it kind of shocking because there's just so much opportunity there. Uh, especially if you've done a lot of optimization within Taboola or another ad platform already, your biggest gains could easily come from your landing page testing. My goal is that by the end of the presentation, you'll walk away knowing the first few things that you should test on your landing pages and how to test them so that you get better results from your campaigns without spending any more money. My pal Joe Martinez puts it really simply uh, when he says, Ads get traffic and landing pages get conversions. So no matter how good your, your targeting, ad design, and ad copy are, your ads just can't do everything alone. It seems like people often know that landing page testing is a good idea, but it's just one of those things that they never really get around to figuring out, either because website responsibility lies with someone else on their team, uh, or because they have to get developers involved, which generally takes, uh, takes forever and it's kind of a pain. So I'll tackle both of those obstacles soon, but just know that those who do overcome them, uh, have high, uh, higher conversion rates, and edge over their competitors, and more options for tests. And so that, that last point there is kind of interesting because it's, uh, it's, it's like a side benefit of taking control of your landing pages. In the same way that you may have started using Excel for one thing, uh, but as you can rely on Excel more and you learned, uh, you learned the tool better, it fundamentally changed the way you work. Uh, if you can launch landing pages yourself, you can pretty much test any kind of campaign you want, and life gets a little bit sweeter once you have that tool in your belt. Today, Sean and I will take you through a number of topics that, uh, that will hopefully leave you with everything you need to know to get more conversions from your Taboola campaigns. That includes understanding the Taboola user so you can cater your ads and landing pages to them, assessing your current pages to find out uh, if your landing pages adhere to landing page best practices, running through some landing page best practices that work specifically for Taboola campaigns, and then explaining how to go about testing your pages to increase conversions. So I'll start by handing it over to Sean to talk uh, a little bit about what makes Taboola's audience different from other ad platforms. Thanks, Corey. So to start off with, we're going to talk about the mindset that the user is in when they're interacting uh, with recommendations across Taboola's network. Uh, it's important to think about the Taboola user mindset, how people engage with uh, content discovery on the open web, uh, and it's probably easiest to understand those things in context of more common uh, advertising tools such as search and social. Uh, discovery tends to be kind of the exact opposite of search in many regards. On a search engine, you go out looking for something specific, and the most relevant option is going to uh, be the first thing that pops up on the SEO list when, when you run that search. Uh, on a discovery platform, uh, the recommendations that you see are really based on what you choose to engage with. And so in a lot of ways for advertisers, Taboola is a poll-based uh, marketing tool. It's very similar to social in that regard, but on the open web discovery, uh, you're dealing simply with past user behaviors. And so when someone sees Taboola recommendation on Bloomberg or Huffington Post or MSN or any of the thousands of sites uh, that they might be seeing those recommendations on, it's mostly based on things that they've chosen to engage with in the past. And so your job as an advertiser is to think about your target audience and think about who you want to discover your content and what that type of person would be most likely to choose to engage with. Now from there, when you think about how people consume landing page content, it's important to remember that these are users that are coming from editorial sites. Again, most of our placements are at the bottom of sites like Huffington Post and Bloomberg. So when someone is consuming content or clicking on an ad in a Taboola placement, 
they are coming to that uh, to that recommendation from a new site, and so they're expecting the content they see to be an extension of that. And when they land on the page, they're going to consume your landing page in a similar way to how they consume editorial content. Most likely, they're going to skim the page. Just quickly scroll down to the bottom and scroll back up before they actually start reading what's on that page itself. About 70% of internet users will do this versus 30% who will land on the page and immediately start reading every word that you've placed on your landing page. So it's important to think about how you present the information to the user, how you make it easy to understand, in addition to, prior to the click, what expectations you set with that user and what they're expecting coming to your page when you're talking about your product itself. Your ultimate job as an advertiser at Taboo then is really to think about, to think about how you reach and engage the user how you gradually guide that user to your KPI, and how you make that action not only easy for the user to complete, but easy to understand as well. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Corey to talk a little bit more about what makes a good landing page. Yeah, so Taboola lets you present a headline to your target audience while they're reading other articles. If they're interested, they'll click on the headline, but if your page content needs, uh, but your page content then needs to fulfill the promise that your headline made. Both pieces are very important to consider when building out an experience to get someone closer to purchasing your product. Um, Taboola has invited me on the webinar today specifically because I work for Unbounce, a company who has gained a ton of insight around what goes into making a good landing page. Before I dive right into landing page tests that you should consider, you should understand the source of the information. Um, Unbounce is cloud-based software that gives marketers a way to build and test landing, page, uh, landing pages and pop-ups so that they can get more conversions from their paid traffic without needing a developer. We've been obsessing over conversions for about eight years now. All the best practices that I'm about to present are a result of us both teaching customers how to be successful using dedicated landing pages and observing what's working and what isn't across our whole customer base. With Unbounce, advertisers can start from one of our uh, 125 templates with the best practices that I'm about to present built in uh, and then modify it so it looks exactly like a page on their website that converts better. All that is, uh, sorry, and then we've got, uh, since 2008, we've more than 240,000 marketers have used Unbalanced to drive about 5 billion visits uh, to 1.5 million landing pages, resulting in 328 million conversions. And all of that to say, we've just we've got a lot of data that we can use to give our customers insights, uh, which we built into those best practices that I'll present today. Speaking of best practices, let's just get into them. The best practices are slightly different depending on which type of campaign you're running. Since Taboola is a pretty unique uh, ad platform, it opens up an opportunity to create lead gen campaigns out of your content. I'll first discuss lead gen pages, uh, and then Sean will come back and help uh, present best practices for content pages. Lead gen pages are pretty straightforward. You present an offer, whether it's an ebook, webinar, live demo, an appointment, or whatever your goal for the campaign is. In exchange, you ask for the pro uh, prospect's information. You've actually encountered an unbalanced built lead gen page when you signed up for this webinar. Taboola's marketing team built it, and more than half the people who visited the page signed up for today's webinar. We've broken lead gen pages down into five elements that are common on every single page. Each element plays a different role in converting the visitor. The actual um, tactics you might use within those elements change depending on your campaign and your industry, um, but by and far we see like all these elements being used on, on almost every page. I'll present, the page, uh, I'll present the page elements as a five-point checklist you can use to ensure your landing page is everything that a prospect, look, prospect looks for when they're deciding if they'd like to take you up on your offer. First is the hero shot. The hero shot's a, uh, a visual representation of your offer. It can help people gain a better understanding of what your product or service is and what it looks like. Often you'll see people using a generic stock photo or a background video that they think looks cool because they know that they need something there, but they don't know what to use, so I hope I can provide some guidance. First, stock photos are lazy. Uh, a few people pointing at a computer screen with a line graph going up or a close-up of a lady smiling are okay, I guess, but it's sort of a wasted opportunity because a hero shot provides an, an opportunity to quickly communicate either what your offer is or what the benefit or the benefit it provides, maybe even more quickly than the headline could. It's the best way to communicate uh, what your offer is by showing the thing in use. If it's an ebook, show a mock-up of a book. In this example on the screen, they're showing off the suits that they're selling. Uh, in the setting what, where the suits will be worn, a wedding. If you do use a person in a hero shot, have them face the CTA on the page because the visitor's eyes are generally drawn toward uh, in the direction that a person in the image is facing. Videos can be effective, but not always. There's no universal truth 
with videos. You just kind of have to test it. Um, but one thing you should probably stay away from at least initially is uh, using video backgrounds that are on a loop. So there's no audio, there's a background playing on a loop. Uh, they're usually just distracting and it becomes much more difficult for the viewer to pay attention to the comedy. Second is the value prop. Typically this comes in the form of a headline and maybe a subhead. The value prop serves two distinct functions simultaneously. First, it acts as a confirmation that the visitor ended up on the right page and that they can indeed act upon the ad that they saw. And second, it clearly communicates what you're offering. So in the example on the screen, it's very clear that if a person fills out the form, they'll be scheduling a suite tour for a waterfront condo. In terms of best, uh, best practices for headlines, communicating that the visitor can act upon the promise made in the ad is as simple as repeating the message in the ad within the headline. Sometimes people, people overcomplicate the headline and ask a question or try to make it rhyme or just generally try to do something that they think is clever, but instead just be clear. Differentiate yourselves from alternatives and competitors, not necessarily by speaking about them directly, just mention why someone would want to choose your offer. So in this case, um, fun and unique toys and treats. Uh, the unique toys and treats would be like the, uh, the differentiator. And I've included a link here to a blog post that I refer to often. Joanna Wee from Copy Hackers suggests five headline formulas that you can use, and I find them as a great starting point. Up third is your call to action. Your call to action can simply be described as the thing you want your visitors to do. So everything on the page should provide reasons why, as to why the visitor should do that thing. In this case, the call to action is booking a suite tour by filling out the form. All the copy images and videos on the page are simply providing reasons as to why the visitor should book that tour. In terms of best practices, just have one CTA, but consider repeating it. Um, if you're collecting a lead, only collect data that you're going to use in a meaningful way. While there are exceptions to that rule, uh, the more info that you can that you ask a person to provide, the less likely that they are to provide it. So in short, like, don't ask six questions if you aren't going to use all those six questions uh, in a way that, act, that is really important. You also want to set an expectation for what will happen after the prospect converts. A good way to set that expectation is by, set, is by finishing the sentence, I want to blank. And that blank is the copy that goes on the button. So in this case, I want to get a quote. A product's benefits are simply a description of what the prospect will be able to do after they take you up on your offer. It's the next thing that you want to address as soon as the person understands what your offer is. People often ask, how long should my landing page be? Uh, and I generally answer with as long as it needs to be to clearly communicate the important benefits of your offer and no, no longer. So you may end up with a super long page if, you're, uh, if your product is really complex and it takes a long time to explain those benefits. Um, but just be as clear and concise as possible with your benefits and bullet points are often a good idea. So in this, in this case, uh, you've got no guessing, no surprises, and if I can move to the webinar page, protect your wallet. Uh, really clear and concise for their, for their audience. Social proof is what communicates your customer, to your customers that there's little risk with your product because others like them have been satisfied with what you're offering. Nobody wants to book a hotel or an Airbnb with no reviews or suggest to their boss that they should be, should be booking uh, some brand new software from a startup because it's risky. But if a friend recommends it because they loved it, it's a different story. There are many different kinds of social proof you can use depending on what would signal low risk in your prospect's mind. Customer testimonials, including or including the number of offers redeemed, trust seals, accreditations, could all work in different scenarios. Uh, in this case, you've got uh, Mike King, a very recognizable marketer, uh, giving a testimonial for Clipfolio, a product aimed at marketers. So I'm gonna hand it back over to Sean to talk a bit more about content pages, something that's uh, actually fairly unique to this Google platform. So go ahead, Sean. Thanks, Corey. So, to talk a little bit about content pages and what makes a content page effective on Taboola, I think it's a, a first important to understand how content pages differ from landing pages. Uh, the purpose of a content page is a little bit different in the sense that it's there to really ease the user into your pitch. It's informative, engaging in its own right, and it specifically aligns with where the Taboola user is coming from. As I mentioned earlier, most Taboola users are coming from editorial sites, therefore, having a content page aligns with where the user is coming from and more gradually guides them through into your sales pitch and eventually becoming a lead for your product. 
However, that doesn't mean that the information is any different. In fact, if you're actually writing content for a content page, it's important to be direct about the product itself. You want to be informative and sell second as opposed to being very salesy with your product, but you still need to speak directly about your product and your value proposition. Content that's effective for generating leads does not talk about uh, some tertiary problem related to uh, your product. In the example of the muffins here, you wouldn't want something uh, to the effect of the five best muffins you can find in New York City. You'd instead want to say how these simple muffins will transform the way you eat in order to sell those muffins. It's also important to bear in mind that the landing page should really contain the same information that a landing page would. Value propositions, product benefits, and social proof are all very important things to include in your content, uh, but rather than formatting them as separate elements of the page, you can include them in the body of your content uh, that the user will then read uh, as they are consuming the content that you've written for them. There are also some elements of the page that you want to maintain as well. Uh, topping it off with a hero image is important for aligning users' expectations and kind of engaging them right from the time they land on the page. And I really love some of Corey's tips about using, uh, example, users looking down the page towards the content or towards a call to action button call to action button to actually guide uh, the user's eyes in that direction. Uh, I also think that it's important to keep the page kind of clean, simple, and readable. Uh, we found that you know, black font on a white background works very, very well for content, uh, just because this is what users are uh, most likely used to reading. And if you think about how we all learn to read from books as little kids, it's really at this point hard-coded into our DNA that you know, black text on a white background is something that's easy for us to read. And so this is what we found to be the most effective way to keep users engaged with content. Uh, lastly, make sure that your content is very easy to read and consume uh, using bolded subheaders and relatively big fonts uh, will help ensure that the user stays on the page uh, and engages with your content. In regards to calls to actions, there are a few things that you want to bear in mind uh, with regard to content page CTAs. Uh, first and foremost is to make sure that you have a call to action button immediately below the body of your content piece. And this is important because you want users to read your content and they're most likely to take the first action that is presented to them at the end of this. We know this because in many cases, Taboola users are finding Taboola placements at the end of articles to begin with. However, it's still important to place calls to action at other places on the page as well. Uh, specifically, a less aggressive call to action about the third of the way down the page once they've started consuming the content, uh, but maybe have not engaged with it fully, is a good way to make sure that users, uh, uh, users engage with calls to action. Uh, right rail CTAs tend to be something that users on uh, on content pages are a little bit uh, less cognizant of because there's sort of a banner blindness problem when it comes to content consumption. However, it's not something that you should write off outright. Uh, it can be a very effective secondary call to action. Uh, one place that you want to avoid having calls to action altogether is below any social share buttons or comment sections that you may place on your content page. Those will largely be ignored by users across Taboola. Uh, when you do write a call to action, as Corey said, be specific about it. Use precise action like buy or sign up uh, as opposed to really general language like click here. Uh, but also make sure that you tell the user why they should take action in a simple way. Tie the call to action into the content that you just presented the user. And if possible, especially where lead gen is concerned, give the user an incentive to leave their information. We want someone to feel informed about your product and feel like they are getting something by giving you their information. What you don't want to do is emphasize multiple actions. If, for example, someone could provide their information or purchase the product, that would be problematic because the user may feel overwhelmed by the choice. As Corey said, it's best to have just one type of call to action. In this case, we're focusing on lead gen. Uh, so do try and provide just a call to action to your lead gen page at the end of your content for most effective campaigns. And lastly, make sure you test your pages. It's important to try different things uh, with regards to your content pages. Swapping out different headlines or different images can make a lot of difference. Uh, and fortunately, Unbounce provides some really great tools for A-B testing. Corey, want to talk more about those? Ooh, good segue.
Um, yeah, so before we get to um, actually executing, I wanted to wrap up the best practices section just by talking a little bit about a tool that we have um, where all the best practices that I've talked about or that we both talked about so far have been about design. Uh, and this tool that we have, the landing page analyzer, helps uh, helps analyze your page across um, a, a number of different factors. So um, I highly recommend that you visit analyzer.unmails.com slash tabula, where you can analyze any of your pages for free. It'll tell you your page's strengths, weaknesses, and what you should be uh, considering testing next. Which brings you to the conclusion, how to start testing your landing pages. So in theory, you could optimize the page that you're currently sending traffic to, but if you're sending traffic to your website or a client's website, getting approvals will be tough, and changing the website may negatively impact how your organic traffic converts. So you don't want to change your website for your ad campaigns uh, because if they're coming in from Google, then, then that they may perform uh, more poorly. If you split out <clears throat> your PPC landing pages from your website, you can let both do the job that they're meant to do. So a website plays a very important role in a business, but it's a fundamentally different role than your PPC landing pages. To break it down, websites are optimized for organic traffic, and landing pages are optimized for ad traffic. Websites aim to provide easy exploration so someone can find whatever it is that they're looking for, but landing pages are designed around a single conversion goal. And a company's website is a hot mess of stakeholders because stakes are so high on there, uh, whereas the stakes are much lower for campaign-specific landing pages, so you just don't need buy-in from everybody and their brother to make a change. And although coding landing pages in your CMS is an option, it takes a really long time and it's a tedious task for developers who could be spending their time doing something more complex. If you were to use a tool like Unbounce, you could make landing pages that look exactly like the ones on your website, but organic traffic can't find them and they convert better. I'll show you a couple examples of how marketers have created both lead gen campaigns uh, and content pages that work beautifully for them. FN Amazing is a digital marketing agency based in Orlando, Florida. Uh, to increase the leads that their client was receiving, they positioned some of their clients' existing content as an ebook. They created a landing page for it, and then they started testing their new, uh, the, the brand new lead gen asset, which started converting at about 44% right out of the gate. To pull it off, they just picked one of our ebook templates, customized it, and published it to their client's domain with, their, with our WordPress integration. It took them less than three hours to execute, and their page started converting at 44% right off the bat. <clears throat> Indochino is an online uh, suit retailer. So in order to drive, uh, and it, they had just recently opened some new stores, uh, and in order to drive foot traffic to those new showrooms, they tried out a content campaign. They created ads that drove uh, to mock articles about five reasons to check out your Indochino showroom, you know, something that would actually be a good topic for a lead gen page, but they turned it into a uh, content format. And then they invited the reader to book an appointment with a tailor. After A-B testing, different variations to those mock articles, 29% of the people who visited that page converted and booked a showroom visit, which is a real testament to the power of content pages to drive leads. Uh, speaking of A-B testing, this is actually really quick. I figured it would just be easier to show you guys how to run an A-B test rather than try to make slides about it. So uh, I'm going to give you a bit of a behind the scenes look here. Um, hopefully you can see these tabs. I believe you can. So this is the page that you signed up for the webinar on. Uh, you were to log into the back end of Upon Balance, you could set up an A-B test really quickly. So you go to edit the page. All you want to do is create a duplicate, a duplicate. Change, I mean, you would have ideally done some research to figure out what it is that you want to change, but uh, I'm just kind of showing you the technically how it works. So let's say we want to generate the we want to test generate more leads and versus generate less leads from your landing page for some weird reason. So we save it. We go back to that overview screen, which I showed you before, and then you just split the traffic 50-50. If I were to republish this, um, we have variant A and variant, I guess, C here, and people would have a 50-50 chance of seeing either one, and then you could see uh, the visitors' views and conversions for each one. Eventually, you'd find a winner, and then you'd know which page converts better. So it's pretty, pretty simple. Get back to the presentation. Or you can always cheat. So if you think you'll have a hard time getting approval on your landing pages, uh, just cheat about it. You can just put a pop-up on whatever page you're currently driving traffic to. Um, you can set it to appear when the person goes to leave the page, which gives you a second chance to convert them uh, with a different offer. So it, I mean, just to kind of put it in context, um, 
you don't necessarily have to be super intrusive about it. Uh, if the you know if the seventy percent of people who are just going to leave your page anyway go to leave and you say, hey, I know like something along the lines of, hey, you maybe not have wanted this uh, this first offer, but here's a second one. You know, just have a second chance at um, at converting them before they leave. And that's uh, campaign monitors have actually been been seeing success with that strategy by triggering a pop up on. Uh, pop up on an exit page, or sorry, on an existing page, they were able to convert 271 new leads per month who would have just otherwise left the site. Similarly to F and Amazing, they just started from a template, modified it to match their brand, set the trigger to on exit, uh, installed the JavaScript and launched. It took less than two hours and they didn't have to change anything on the website. So in terms of next steps, like what you would do after you now have an idea of what you might change on your page and how you might uh, execute it, uh, there's a poll when you go to leave the webinar that just asks if you'd like to learn more about Unbounce and have an Unbounce expert reach out. If you'd like to, to answer yes. And, uh, and otherwise, I do encourage you to analyze your page at analyzer.unbounce.com slash tabula. Uh, it's a free tool and you can just see how your page ranks and, and it provides some automated suggestions on what you could improve there as well. Cool. So thank you very much for all that, Corey, and thanks for joining us today to, to present all this. Uh, now to kind of wrap things up, we're going to be taking some questions from you guys. If you do have uh, any remaining questions, uh, you can still send questions using the questions tab in your GoToWebinar control panel on the right side of your screen. And we're going to have Lindsay from Taboola join us to read your questions. Hey guys. Um, let's see, it looks like the first question we have coming in here. Uh, which kinds of campaigns generally work better on Taboola, content or straight lead generation? So I seem, feel like that's probably uh, best for, for me to answer here since, uh, since I'm on the Taboola side of things. Uh, really the, the, the short answer is it depends on your product. Um, and really is something that uh, you should test. Um, you know, one of the big reasons that uh, we love Unbounce and wanted to invite uh, Corey to speak today uh, is because uh, uh, lead generation pages have been so successful on Taboola in the past, uh, in addition to content pages, um, which are maybe a little bit more typical for our platform. Uh, so really, there is no right answer, and it depends on what works best for, for your product. Uh, if it's easier for you to uh, produce a lead generation page, I uh, highly recommend starting with that approach, uh, testing a few things to find out what works, and then maybe writing a content piece. If you tend to be a little bit more long-winded of a person and prefer writing content to generating a, a landing page, then start out with content test it, see what works, and then spin that out into a landing page using a platform like Unmats. Great. Uh, the next one here is about e-commerce specifically. Um, do landing pages make sense for e-commerce? Wouldn't I just want to send people to my product page? And do you have any examples of um, landing page and content pages that have worked really well for e-commerce? I guess I'll take that one. Um, Landing pages for e-commerce is a tough one because typically you're you're right, absolutely. You would want to send traffic to your product pages if you're trying to sell your product. Um, in the context of lead gen, though, it makes perfect sense because you're not you probably don't have pages set up on your website to handle that kind of stuff. Like your e-commerce software isn't isn't set up for that sort of thing. And so for lead gen pages, I would say it absolutely does make sense if you have an email strategy or a sales strategy um, to follow up on leads. Um, Good examples. I mean, that Indochino one actually is a pretty good example because they're an e-commerce e brand. Um, they've just dedicated some of their marketing budget towards lead gen as well. Okay, great. And the next one is about layout for Unbounce. Um, someone here is saying that they used to use Unbounce, but they weren't able to integrate their header and footer, so it didn't capture the look of their website. They're wondering if that has changed. Um, if there are additional options for making landing pages mirror existing site page layouts. Um, there's no automated way to just pull in your existing header and footer exactly. Um, I would be, I would, I would imagine that you could just recreate the header and footer within Unbounce uh, and to look exactly like it would on your page. I'm not sure exactly like, maybe there was some technical, I'm not sure exactly what the issue was with just rebuilding it. Uh, maybe it was just kind of like, you wished it was more automated, but no, we haven't, 
uh, we have not rolled out any features specifically to pull in elements of your web page uh, or website into your, into your inbound landing pages. Um, and kind of along the same topic, someone's asking here, is the long form article unbounce landing page available as a template? The long form, there is not one single template that's called the long form template exactly. Uh, we have, you know, within the 100 plus templates we have, there are a lot of templates that are long um, because it sort of tries to cater to a bunch of different industries. Uh, so it's a tough question to answer. We don't have like the exact long form template, but we have many templates that are long, if that helps. Okay, um, next one here. Does Unbounce AB, does Unbounce AB testing always show the same page version to a visitor? Yeah, it does. Um, I believe it's through cooking. What we do is you know, we make sure that uh, there's a 50-50 chance that you will see uh, a specific variant when you land on the page, but then if you were to revisit that page over and over, you'd still see the same variant, so you wouldn't get confused about the different kinds of messaging you're seeing. Um, so that adds for, you know, it makes it for a cleaner test. Okay. Um, another question here, for our submissions to be approved, do we need to add any type of um, legal qualifications, in terms of agreement, privacy, policy, contact pages? So I believe that that's a question for the Taboola side of things uh, regarding the, the Taboola approvals process. Um, assuming such, um, the answer is uh, kind of, it depends. Um, what's important to note uh, specifically for policy reasons, and, and this is my understanding, I, I must qualify this myself in saying that I am not the person that uh, manages or enforces uh, Taboola's uh, campaign approval policy. Um, but I think that it's important to bear in mind that any bold claims uh, should be supported, um, that if there are any specific numbers that are given or, uh, you know, any, any proof elements that are required for your product, um, that those be supported appropriately. Um, you know, for example, if you were to, um, you know, make the claim that, uh, you know, 600% 6 per, uh, of people that use this hand cream have, have softer skin, for example. Um, you would want to have that claim supported by, uh, by a, uh, a research statistic. Or uh, if you were trying to, for example, uh, generate leads for a local mortgage company, uh, you would want to make sure that you have all of the proper licensing information uh, for that mortgage company, uh, uh, NMLS numbers and the like, uh, to make sure that that information that kind of uh, bodes with regulatory uh, guidelines uh, is all handled and taken care of on your page. Great, and we're receiving a couple questions um, regarding mailing lists. Um, one here is saying, is there specific advice you have for building a personal brand and mailing list using Taboola and lead generation pages? Um, and this other one here, kind of to blend the two, uh, is asking kind of best practices um, for mailing list offers, how to keep it simple while still conveying the value a mailing list offers. So if I may uh, start off just by taking uh, what I've seen from the Taboola side of things in terms of best practices, and then I'll, uh, I'll let Corey add on from the Unbounce side of things for newsletters. Uh, what I've generally seen from the Taboola side of things is that people don't, uh, don't give information for no reason. Uh, it's important that the user do feel as though they're, they're getting something uh, in exchange for leaving their information. So if you going to be uh, getting people to sign up for a newsletter, uh, giving the user something uh, in, uh, in regards to, um, you know, a deliverable can be a really effective way to do that. Uh, for example, if you are providing a, um, a newsletter um, for a sneaker website, for example, uh, offering uh, you know, 5% off a pair of sneakers at a partner retailer uh, would be an effective way to get people to, to leave their information uh, and something that we've seen work really well uh, across uh, Taboola's platform. And then I'll throw it over to Corey uh, for, for any uh, best practices from the unbound side of things. 
Yeah, it's it's. I had a minute to think about this while you were answering, so that was nice. Um, I feel like there's two different approaches. One is this sort of bait and switch method that I think we're we've been talking about a lot of the time. You know, it's if you enter your email information, we're going to give you an ebook or five percent off or whatever it is, and that's very much like you want this thing in order to get it. You have to give us your information, um, and that is mostly what people do. The other option is treat your mailing list like a product. Um, you know, they're going to sign. They're going to sign up. They're going to get emails, and those emails should be inherently valuable to them. So, what is the value that you're providing? Are you going to be um, giving, you know, the monthly top tips on fashion? Are you going to be giving, um, I don't know, is it some sort of course where, like, at the end, at the end of this email series, you will be able to accomplish X, Y, or Z? But if you really sell it as, you know, join the list for this specific reason, this is what we're going to deliver to you. Um, I don't know if it would. The jury's out on whether it would convert as well as the bait and switch, but I do feel like you'd have a more engaged list. They'd know what to expect when they started getting your emails, and uh, and they come in with the right mindset. Okay, I think we have time for a couple more here. Uh, the next one is: Do you typically see that press earned content works better compared to owned content or landing pages for conversions on Taboola? Sure. So I'll take that one. Um, I would say that again, and and this may be an infuriating answer because I'm repeating it, it really depends on your product and is something that you should test. Uh, earned media is a really great tool to use on Taboola because it kind of provides the social proof for you. Um, if someone else is writing something fantastic about your product, uh, then that is something that you can use and can use as a way to, to promote with some credibility. Um, and this is, you know, one of the big reasons why so many successful advertisers um, have used uh, earned media in the past on Taboola. Um, however, it is important that that earned media piece also conveys the other things that are important uh, for, especially for for driving leads. Um, you know, we you did still need to make sure you still need to make sure that the earned media piece effectively communicates your value proposition, and you need to make sure that that earned media piece uh, clearly explains the benefits of your product. Uh, if the earned media piece provides that social proof aspect and provides that uh, you know credible um, sense of endorsement of your product, but doesn't effectively communicate your value and the benefits of your product, then it's still not going to be as effective uh, as a landing page that you built yourself that does contain all three of those items. Uh, is going to be. So it really does depend on uh, what the quality of the earned media piece is um, and how well it communicates uh, your value proposition as well as to whether one is better than the other. Uh, it really is just important to make sure that in terms of the narrative and the story that you are framing uh, that you do communicate, again, value proposition and benefits in addition to some social proof around why your product is valuable. Hey, actually, I have a, a follow-up question for you around this topic, Sean, because um, we have tried using earned media in our ad campaigns before, um, and in theory, what you so in theory, what, what you see is like the piece is really good. It's uh, it's really credible because it's not written by you. In theory, it's written by someone who like really believes it's they've done a good job on the editorial piece. The problem then comes in with what you described, where it's like the CTA isn't may not be there, the social proof may not be there, like the, the things that are that are there to convert just aren't there. And I'm curious if you've ever seen anyone solve that problem? Like, is there any way to effectively inject, I don't know, inj inject a CTA into this otherwise credible article? So one thing that uh, other Taboola uh, users have done or Taboola clients have done in the past uh, to kind of overcome that is actually add a retargeting element onto uh, their earned media pieces. Uh, Taboola actually offers a couple really effective tools for doing that. One, we offer sequential retargeting options, uh, which is when you set up a campaign in Taboola, you have the ability to retarget people who clicked on uh, other Taboola campaigns that you may be running. So if you're running an earned media piece, you can set up a separate campaign that will target only people who clicked on content pieces from that campaign. Uh, and that allows you to serve a more direct call to action based content piece, maybe a landing page uh, or a content piece that you uh, that you built on your own uh, to someone who's already engaged with earned media about uh, your product. In some cases, uh, I have seen 
um, some uh, some advertisers uh, successfully get um, retargeting pixels uh, placed on their content pieces. Uh, you can actually uh, add in pixels on impression and on click levels uh, through Taboola's backstage platform as well um, if you want to trigger uh, external pixels. Uh, so if you want to, for example, retarget someone um, with a more common uh, retargeting platform like um, uh, <laughs> blanking on uh, on, on the name right now, um, Critio, for example. If you wanted to retarget using Critio, you can add a, a Critio pixel into your Taboola click action uh, and then retarget someone through that platform as well. Um, but that can be a kind of a more, more complex way of getting someone. But uh, retargeting tools tend to be the most effective way to kind of uh, to drive conversions when the earned media piece isn't providing a call to action or any way to get the user through to your website uh, from the earned media piece itself. Does that uh, answer your question there, Corey? Yeah, it does. Thanks. Um, actually, there's this other tool that I've been, I can't remember the name of it, so I should probably mention it after the webinar, but there's another tool that um, we've considered using but never really toyed around with that I think might be effective for something like, for something like that where um, essentially you, Put the put the URL of the earned media piece in this tool, and it creates this like sort of like frame around it where mm -hmm. you could, in theory, create a Taboola ad, have it go, have, use this link to go to the article, but you get this CTA that just sort of pops up and hovers above it, um, and it doesn't actually change anything on the page. Uh, it just allows you to like insert something there where there would have been otherwise nothing. So that that might be an interesting. Uh, Use case, although I can't remember the name of the tool, so it's ultimately <laughs> not that useful. So I've I've seen those tools in use before, um, and uh, actually uh, shy away from recommending them. Oh, yeah. uh, the The reason being uh, is simply that floating calls to action tend to be easier for uh, you know base internet users, people who are not advertisers and not uh, used to looking for these sophisticated tools. Um, you know they they tend to um, uh, ignore uh, those kind of more floating, kind of iframey uh, call to action elements because they disappear into the, the fixed window uh, outside of the content window, uh, rather than being something that kind of blends into the content itself, like a fixed call to action at the end or uh, built into the content page itself would appear. That makes sense. And I'm sorry to divert from other those questions. Uh, Lindsay, are there any more? Awesome. Yeah, we have a few more coming in that are kind of more specific to um, certain industries and companies themselves that I'm more than happy to share with you guys over email and we can get back to everyone here um, individually offline. But I think that's uh, about all of our time for today. And as said, um, there will be a recording shared. Um, if you have another question that comes up, feel free to send it over to us and we will follow up over email. And thanks, Sean and Corey. This was great. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Oh, go ahead, Corey. Just saying the exact same thing. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Yep. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And uh, thanks for, for all the great questions that you sent in.